Today we're going to be talking about radical exponents. And really all along we've been talking about radical exponents. Okay, so when you have a fractional exponent, all you're finding is a root. So 27 to the 1 third power is the cube root of 27. Or negative 16 to the 1 half power is the square root of negative 16. So writing each in radical form, how I always remember it, this number on the bottom is what your radical is, or your index. So that's 7 square root of a to the first power, or just a. For part b, the number on the bottom of the fraction is your index, or your root. The number on top is the power of your exponent. So now writing each in exponential form, okay? This is a fractional exponent. This means c to the 1 8th power. c is to the first power, that's why it's 1 over 8. For part b, it's b to some fractional power. Remember that the index is the number that goes in the bottom. The exponent goes on top. Okay, now simplifying, okay, simplifying. There's really two ways you can think about this, okay? So in this 27 to the 2 thirds power, what they did is they chose to do the cube root of 27 because that's going to make that a smaller number, okay? What you do when you're finding roots, you're finding a smaller number than that number and then taking it to the second power. I don't want to have to do 27 to the second power and then cube root of that. So for this expression, we have a lot of negatives happening. First of all, let's deal. That negative, just keep as a negative. This is the same thing as a fraction of this negative 3,125 to the 1 -fifth power. So just keep that in mind. Negative exponents, just move that to the bottom. Now what does that mean? That means I'm looking for the fifth root of 3,125. Five of the same things that multiply to be that, and it's a negative, is negative one-fifth, because that simplifies to a negative five on the bottom. Now, for 81 to the three-fourths power, do the fourth root of 81 first, because that's going to make that a smaller number, then we're going to cube it. So the fourth root of 81 for the same things that multiply to be 81 is 3 cubed 27. Okay, next example. Simplify each. And I'm not going to lie, students sometimes struggle with this, but all you need to remember is that it's the same thing we've been doing, just now I have fractions for my exponents. So I have the same base. When I have that same base, what do I do to the exponents? We add those exponents. So same base, add the exponents. 1 7th plus 4 7ths is 5 7ths. Okay, for the next one, negative exponent puts that in the bottom. And that's the cube root of x squared. Now we can't have radicals in the bottom, so I need to multiply by something that's going to make that an x to the third underneath there. The cube root of x over the cube root of x, when I multiply this x times that x underneath my radical, I'm going to get x to the third, which is going to simplify to be x. On the top, we just have the cube root of x, and that just carries along with us. Okay, our next one. Actually, let's do B first. I like B a little bit more than I like A. Because this sixth root and third root kind of frightened me, so let's do B first. Okay, break down 16x to the fourth into perfect cubes. So that's going to be 16. <clears throat> 16 is 8 times 2. 8 is a perfect cube. 2 is not. But they multiply to be 16. Why did I leave that space there? I left a space for x to the third times by x. 
this 8x cubed can break out. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x cubed is x. Those break out, and underneath my reticle, I'm left with a 2x. Okay, let's go back to the scary one over here. I don't think it's that bad. If you remember that they have to be the same base, in order to work with them, you have to have the same base. So I really have 16 to the 1 sixth, and I have 2 to the 1 third. 16 to the 1 sixth. Well, that's 2 to the 4th power. 16 can change to 2 to the 1 fourth, 2 to the 4th power. And then I have 2 to the 1 third power. 4 times 1 sixth, that turns into 2 to the 2 thirds over 2 to the 1 third. I can now subtract those exponents and get 2 to the 1 third. Or you could write it as the cube root of 2. Okay, this next example. This looks a lot scarier than it is. Technically, we've already done this. Because remember, one-half powers are like saying the square root of y plus 1. Why do the one-half powers square root of y minus 1? Now take and multiply. Okay? Remember, I can't have a radical on the bottom, so we multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to FOIL that out. Uh, first terms together, we get y. The middle term, minus root y, and root y, that's, they cancel. And then we're left with minus 1. Okay. Now on the top, first terms together, we get y. Outer terms together, we get plus root y. Inner terms together, we get plus root y. Last terms together, we get plus 1. So on the bottom, the reason, again, the conjugate works is because those now cancel. And all I'm left with on the bottom is y minus 1. On the top, we have y plus 2 root y plus 1. I'm okay if you leave it like that, and I actually teach this slightly different than the book. So what the book leaves it as is 2 times y to the 1 half power plus 1. I don't care which one you do. They're the same thing. You're really doing the same thing two different times. All right. There is your lesson questions. This, you have to give me a number. Okay. And realize that's non-calculator. And then this is multiple choice, and this one's multiple choice. Okay? And you have to give me an answer for each one of those, and number one should be a number. And please make sure that in your summary is submitted on time.